from Indonesia, the biggest Muslim country in the world, but before coming Islam, it was Hinduism, and Buddhism, and then coming Islam, and then Christianity. So how all these religions live together, and especially how is Buddhism evolves from the period pre-Islamic to the period after Islam. So I will be a bit provocative by giving this title, Is Buddhism Monotheist? This is the adaptation of Buddhism in contemporary Indonesia. So this is my plan. I will not read the paper, but just improvise with this plan. Uh, I have to introduce a little bit the situation of socio-religious context in Indonesia. And then the role, the relations between religion and state. And then the third, the weight of Islam and the reorganization of religions under Suhaq Origi. And then what I call monotheization of all religions. And then I will give a closing remark. Uh, Socio-religious situation in Indonesia. Indonesia is a multi-ethnic and multi-religious nation. Geographically, we are 5,000 kilometers from east to west. You can imagine 5,000 kilometers mean Tehran to London. Uh, and 17,000, more than 17,000 islands, more than five ethnic groups, uh, and five big world religions, Buddhism, Christianity, uh, Islam, Hinduism, and Confucianism. In Indonesia, Confucianism is recognized as religion. And hundreds of local beliefs, which nothing to do, to do with world religion. Uh, so this is the ethnic and religious diversity in Indonesia. So how all these religions evolve? Well, at the bottom it is indigenous religions. Then came the influence of India from the first century until 16th century. It means we were influenced or impregnated by Indian civilization during 16th century. Only Islam came after, uh, starting from 16th century, until now it's not finished. And then Westernization, Christianization, also starting from 16th century, until now it's not finished. What I call the concept in, 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 in history, there is a concept what is called Indianization, Islamization, Westernization. So I, I will just introduce, what does it mean, Indianization? If you look at the whole Southeast Asia, you will have uh, common vocabularies from Sanskrit language related to Hinduism and Buddhism. Temples, Hindu, Buddhist, etc. Uh, that the whole South Asia was Indianized. Only Vietnam was not Indianized, it was Sinicized, uh, contrary to other parts of South Asia. I define Indianization as introduction of Indian civilization outside India, which transformed the society politically, socially, religiously, etc. Et so they become Hindu, Buddhist, and all the temples, and the model of monarchy from India, the Waraja, the social caste, etc. Et we adopted all this until 16th century, and even until now in Bali, because Bali is the only island which stayed Hindu. Uh, while the other island, well, there are many indigenous beliefs, but majority Islam. So, in the same modality, Islamization, and then Westernization, Christianization, and they do not exclude each other. It means that in our mental structure, we have at the same time Hindu, Buddhist, and that element of Islam can, that uh, uh, how do you say, uh, superpose each other. At the bottom, profound, it is Hindu and, and, uh, and Buddha. So, uh, we have what is called syncretism. Even the, the, well, I am from Yogyakarta, which is a special province, because it is a 
kingdom inside the republic. And the king claims himself, I am a syncretic of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam. Do you imagine? If it is seen from the point of view of purifi purifying Islam, it is amazing. Uh, 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 but it is the reality. So there's, uh, there's a conflict, with, this is new family, between the syncretic uh, people and the Puritan people who try to purify Islam from the element pre-Islamic or purify Christianity from this become a, a, a conflict. All this movement of what is called fundamentalist extremists come from this tendency of purifying religions from other uh, elements. So the second uh, point, religion and state after independence. So what is the relationship between state and religion? You know, this is the paradox of Indonesia. Indonesia is the biggest Muslim country in the world, but it's not Islamic state. Islam is not state religion. Islamic law is not ad adopted, it's not applied, not like Malaysia, for example. Malaysia is a small Muslim country, but Islam is state religion, and Islamic law is applied to Muslim. While Indonesia is the biggest Muslim country in the world, Islam is not religion, uh, state religion, Islamic law is not applied. So, uh, this, so, if it is not based on Islam, what is the foundation, philosophical foundation of the state of Indonesia? It is from Indian influence called Pancasila. Pancasila. But in Sukarno, the first president of Indonesia, which translates into five principles, the first principle is the supremacy of one God. The second, humility. The third, unity uh, of Indonesia. The fourth, democracy. And the fifth, social justice. Why there's belief in one God, faith on, in one God as the first one? It, it was a compromise. Because during the preparation of constitution of independence, there are two group of nationalists, Islamic nationalists and secular nationalists. The Islamic nationalists wish that Indonesia be Islamic state. The president of Indonesia has to be Muslim and the Islamic law has to be applied to Muslim. But the secular nationalists like Sukarno, Hatta, all these leaders of independence, they are secular, they don't agree. No, no question, we are multi-ethnic, multi-religious, even Sukarno, his mother is Balinese, his father Javanese, uh, syncretic, so he said himself, I am Hindu, Muslim, and Marxist. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's finally, it is a compromise that the first principle is belief in one God. But it is not mentioned who's God, what God, it is Allah, it is home, it is uh, uh, Father, uh, so this is Panchashila. So during Sukarno period, it is a really freedom of, of conscience. You can be uh, atheist, you can be... It, you know that the Communist Party in Indonesia during Sukarno period is the biggest Communist Party in Asia after China. But after that, the Kudeta, military Kudeta, supported by the United States to reverse Sukarno, replaced by Suharto, it is supported by the United States, and the communism, Marxism, Leninism, Maoism was banned uh, during Suharto panic. And Suharto, this is now the third part, Suharto used religion to control society. So, uh, everybody has to have a religion. This is in uh, Suharto panic. And in the identity card, you have to put your religion on the identity card. And not only did they take five religions. Uh, including Buddhism. But even all the religion has to ad adapt itself to the doctrine of the state, because the state wants to control. So Suharto used religion as a tool uh, of controlling the society with the model of Islam. What is the model of Islam? Religion according to Islam, they have to have one God. Second, they have to have a prophet. Third, they have to have a sacred book. Therefore, they have to be to have rituals and their institutions 
and mosque, this is Islamic model, applied to all religions. So now it's problematic. What happened with Hindu? There many three religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. Are they monotheist? The question, if not, they risk to be persecuted because you are not monotheist, you are not Pancasila. So you, you have to convert into other religion. So this is the way I am going to talk how the Buddhist Indonesian Buddhists adapt themselves to this environment. Uh, well, for Hindu, it is easy. They can be recognized easily as monotheist because you have Brahma, uh, who is uh, represented uh, uh, into three, Vishnu, Shiva, and, and uh, Brahma. So there is monotheist. Confucius, Confucius or Confucianism, they, they don't have a God personified God like uh, Islam or Christianity. But they have a notion of supreme being which is the sky, which is called Tian uh, in, in, in Chinese. So the Chinese Indonesian, Confucius, Confucianist Indonesian, they adopt Tian as they got Confucius as a prophet, the Book of Four, which is Neo-Confucianism as the sacred book, and they have ritual, they have Chinese temple everywhere in Indonesia, so they set up. Now, how is Buddhism? Buddhism doesn't speak about God. So, Indonesian Buddhists, they have to invent God. So, uh, there is uh, a proposal of a group of Buddhists that in Mahayana Buddhism, there is a concept of absolute uh, where Buddha said, Oh mom, if there is no one not engendered, not created, not uh, which is absolute. There is no possibility of liberation from this uh, suffering, etc. But if there is uh, uh, one who is up to, who is uh, uh, not engendered, not uh, etc., not created, this is the absolute. Then there is a possibility of liberation of suffering. Uh, I, I. Do not know by her, it is in my computer since I am not reading the text. But this is just a glimpse of the idea that they find in a, a text of uh, Mahayana the, the concept of supreme uh, absolute, which is uh, uh, then they, they call Adi Buddha. Adi Buddha. Adi Buddha. But it is not settled because we have in Indonesia seven schools of thought of, of Buddhism. So, Buddhism in Indonesia is not, not monolithic. You have uh, ancient Buddhists, you have uh, new Buddhist Theravada, you have Mahayana. We have seven schools of thought of Buddhism. So they quarrel each other. No, it's not possible. We, we don't have this concept. Of so, the Minister of uh, Religious Affairs intervened. You have to decide. And so they agreed to decide that Adi Buddha as God, and Buddha, Bukutama, as prophet, and Tripitaka as sacred book of Buddha, and you have Buddhist temples, etc. So it's set up. This is how the Indonesian Buddhists adapt themselves. Concerning the belief inside, we don't know, but officially they have this, uh, this uh, conception of, of uh, Buddhism. So this is uh, the adaptation of Buddhism in contemporary. Indonesia. Now, after the fall of Suharto, all this question is not valid anymore. I spoke about the period of Suharto because now uh, the return of democracy, even a few months ago, the Supreme Court of Indonesia recognized all indigenous beliefs, hundreds of them, as equal as these imported religions. <laughs> Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity are imported religions. So, even the, 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 the tribes from remote island, they can get married with their local tree. 
without the converting into Christianity or Islamism. So that is the uh, end of my presentation. I will just give a closing remarks.